Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. In today's video, I'll be using some Christmas products from Violet Studio. Scrapbook.com was so kind to send me several of the new Christmas kits. There are several kits available and you can use them individually or you can mix and match them and that's what I'll be doing in this video. I have the decoupage card making kit, also the card making and stamping kit, even though this isn't a card kit, I'm also using the gift decorating kit since many of the items you can use for cards. And the final kit is the die cutting and embossing kit. Many of the items you can also purchase individually. And I will have links for all of the products in the description box below. If you've never tried decoupage before, it's so much fun. Here's one of the decoupage sheets. You simply punch out the pieces that you want and they are all labeled. So we have A1, A2, A3, and A4. They're designed to add foam dimension on the back side. Then you can layer all those pieces together for a really fun dimensional image. Now you can always leave off one or two of the layers if you really don't want your image that thick. Each decoupage sheet also has some punch outs that you can use separately. So this one we have the with love sentiment and there's a couple other images. Once I have all of my pieces punched out, I'll use a small pair of scissors to cut off those tiny little paper tabs. If they don't bother you, you can definitely leave them on, but I like to snip those off. I'm using scrapbook.com's small precision scissors. These are about four inches. It's a perfect size to get into some of those tiny areas. The decoupage card making kit includes 24 sheets of decoupage. So you have lots and lots of images to use. And if you only add two of the layers instead of all four, you could double how many images you can use for your cards. I have just a couple more pieces to trim off those little tabs. Now it's time to layer all of those pieces together to create a fun dimensional image. You can use whatever foam dimension you prefer. I'm using scrapbook.com's 3D foam squares, the small size. I like to get good coverage so there aren't any areas that sag. So I do make sure to use quite a few of the foam pieces. In those teeny tiny areas, I'll also trim down some of the small squares. I'll remove the release paper and adhere my first layer on top of that base background. Then I'll do the same for the third and fourth layers. Each layer that you add is slightly smaller than the previous layer. So there's a little extra dimension for the car and a couple of the trees. For the very final car piece, I am cutting some tiny little pieces to put underneath the roof of the car since it is fairly narrow. I don't want any of that foam dimension visible from the front. This image is one of my favorites from the whole collection. I love the little car stacked with presents and lots of fun Christmas trees around it. I'll add the final piece for the car, then I have one more tree to adhere on the right side. So here you can see all that fun dimension. Now I'll start working on the card so I can add my fun decoupage image. For adhesive, I'll be using scrapbook.com's permanent adhesive roller. It's a nice small size and easy to use. I always keep some of the small tape rollers on hand. My daughter prefers to use them for her school projects and she is not a fan of glue sticks and I can't blame her. The pattern paper I'm using is included in the card making and stamping bundle, but you can also purchase it separately. For the background, I have a fun pattern with cars and trucks. I layered it on some dark green cardstock. I did add a narrow strip of that same green cardstock to the background, then attach my decoupage image in the center. I'll add a red pre-tied bow to the top of one of the trees, and I adhered it in place using a small glue dot. Then for a final finishing touch, I'll add a couple of gem stickers next to the sentiment. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. Now moving on to card design number two. I selected two different pattern papers. I have a red tone on tone diagonal stripe paper for the background and a red and white polka dot paper for that smaller piece. 
I'll layer the red and white polka dot paper on some scrapbook.com vellum, leaving about an eighth of an inch on the top and bottom. Then I'll add this panel on some red cardstock, put some adhesive on the back and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Most of my cards in this video are American standard A2 size. At the very end, I do have a couple of six by six size cards. I've already assembled one of the decoupage images. It has the teal track filled with trees and presents and the sentiment home for Christmas. And I'll adhere that in place using Honeybee Stamps precision tip glue. I love the pre-tied bows, so I will be using those quite a bit. I'm adding one of them underneath the truck on the right hand side. Then for a final finishing touch, I'll add some more of the gem stickers. Put three of them in the upper left hand corner. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. The paper pad has 36 sheets, three of each design. So it's easy to make multiples of the same card. Now moving on to card design number three. I selected two different pattern papers. I have more of the red and white polka dot paper for that smaller panel. And the background has lots of trees and a little red car with a Christmas tree on top. I did round the bottom two corners. For solid cardstock, I am using a couple of the smooth cardstock collections from scrapbook.com. I have the peppermint and also the jewels collection. Many of the greens and reds match beautifully with the Home for Christmas collection. I'll put adhesive on the back and add my card front onto a card base. Then I'll be adding another decoupage piece, this time a fun little tag that has three Christmas trees and the sentiment Merry Christmas. I'll adhere that to the card at an angle using some liquid adhesive. Then I'll be adding one of the extra images from the decoupage sheet, this little car with some presents on top, and I will pop that up with some foam dimension. I'll adhere it to the left side of the tag. Then I'll add one of the green bows to the top of the tag and finish off the card by adding some of the green gem stickers. For card design number four, I will be using a card sketch for inspiration. This is from Sugar Pea Designs. It's Sugar Sketch number 36. And if you are interested in any of the card sketches I use in this video, I do share all of that information on my coordinating blog post. That link is provided in the description box below, or you can simply head over to christymarcott.com. For this card, I selected two different pattern papers. For the background, there's lots of vehicles with Christmas trees and presents. And I also have a strip of the pattern paper with the sentiment, fa la la la. I layer everything on some dark green cardstock. And I did add a scallop border die cut above the sentiment pattern paper. And this is a border die set from scrapbook.com. Next, I'll add a stitch circle die cut. Before adhering it in place, I will put a scrap cardstock piece at the very bottom and that'll help keep it nice and level before adhering it onto that pattern paper strip. Then I'll add a couple of tree die cut pieces and these are from one of the Home for Christmas card making kits. I'll also add one of the sentiment tags, Tis the Season. For a little extra detail, I'll add a small banner in the upper right hand corner and I'm just cutting this out myself from the same dark green cardstock. Then to finish up the card, I'll add one of the peach colored bows on the left side of the sentiment. I'll adhere that in place using a small glue dot. Then for a final finishing touch, I'll add some of the dark green gem stickers. I'll put three around the tree images and two in the upper right hand corner. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. Now moving on to card design number five. I selected two different pattern papers and I did want to mention there is a slight difference between the paper pad that comes in one of the kits and the paper pad you can purchase individually. So the paper pad on the right is included in the kit and it has a very matte finish. The paper pad on the left has a little bit of a glossy finish and the colors are more saturated. Both of them are beautiful. I just wanted to point out there is a difference. 
For this card, I'm using the individually purchased paper pad. I have the present pattern paper for the background, adding some more of the red and white polka dot paper. Then I'll be using one of the chipboard frames. There is adhesive on the back, but I always like to add a little bit of liquid adhesive just to make sure it stays in place. I'll adhere the chipboard frame at an angle. Then I'll add one of the sentiment ephemera pieces, Merry Christmas. Then to finish off the card, I'll add one of the light teal bows to the center present and also add two of the green gem stickers on the upper right hand side of the frame and three of them underneath the frame on the left side. So there's my finished card and I did make two using this design. Now moving on to card design number six. The card sketch is from MFT. This is number 282. I have the pattern paper for the background with lots of vehicles. And I also have a strip of the red and white polka dot paper for the very bottom of the card. I'll layer both of those on some dark green cardstock. Add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Now I'll be using some of the small sticker images and I'll be adding them onto a small circle die cut. It's just slightly larger than the size of the circle, so you will see a small white frame around all of those images. I'll adhere the circle die cuts down first, trying to make sure to get them evenly placed. I'll start with the one in the center, work my way to the right, and then add the final two circles on the left side. And I'm using some liquid adhesive to adhere all of those circles. There is just a little bit of time to adjust those before the glue adheres. Next, I'll add five of the sticker images. I have the holly and berries in the center, two of the vehicles next, and then some trees and a present. For sentiment, I'll be using one of the sentiment tags, but I did cut off the hole that was on the left side and this is Christmas Wishes. I'll adhere it in the lower right-hand corner. Then using the same dark green cardstock, I'll cut a large banner and adhere that in the upper left-hand corner. For a final finishing touch, I'll add a couple of the green gem stickers onto that banner. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. For card design number seven, the card sketch is from Sugar Pea Designs. This is Sugar Sketch number 53. I selected two pattern papers. I have a red and white diagonal stripe paper for the background, and then a fun design with lots of Christmas sentiments for that smaller panel. I'll layer the sentiment pattern paper on some light green cardstock and layer the background on some red cardstock. Put my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. For that strip that goes across the card, I'll use the same red card stock. For this circle, I cut this out from one of the six by six size card bases that are included in the kit. I thought that color worked perfectly with the other colors on this card. I'll adhere the circle down first, then I can add the red strip. I'm also using one of the ribbons with the sentiment fa la la la, and I did adhere that using some double-sided tape. I'll wrap the ends of the ribbon around the back before adhering it down. That way I won't have to worry about the ends of the ribbon unraveling. Next I'll add one of the image ephemera pieces, the teal truck loaded up with presents, and I did pop it up using some foam dimension. I'll also put a small banner in the upper left-hand corner, and I cut this out from the same red cardstock. I'll adhere that in place using liquid adhesive. Then to finish off the card, I'll add some more of the gem stickers. Put two in the upper left-hand corner and three around the image. With all of the sentiments on that background paper and on the ribbon, I didn't think the card needed another sentiment. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. For card design number eight, the card sketch is from MFT. This is number 180. I selected two pattern papers. I have the fun present paper for the background, adding a strip of the red and white polka dot paper on the left side, and I am cutting a fishtail on the bottom. 
Then I'll put adhesive on the back and adhere it in place. The truck image with the sentiment Merry Christmas is one of the three by three cut aparts that's included in the paper pad. I layered that on some red cardstock and I'm layering the background piece on some green and also some red cardstock. The measurements I provide on the card sketches are generally for the pattern paper. Then I add an additional eighth of an inch for the cardstock layers. Now I modify those measurements all the time. And this card is a good example of that since the cut apart image is three by three inches. I'll put some adhesive on the back and add my card front onto a card base. I'm keeping this card fairly simple, just adding a few of the green gem stickers in the upper right hand corner. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. It's always fun when paper pads include some cut aparts, makes it really quick and simple to pop together some beautiful cards. Now moving on to card design number nine, I'm using my favorite card sketch. This is from OWH, it's number 218. I'm using some craft cardstock by Lawn Fawn for the background, adding a strip of the holly and berries at the bottom, and using the pattern paper with all the vehicles inside a bunch of wreaths. I'll layer everything on some dark green cardstock. I'll put some adhesive on the back and add my card front onto a card base. For the sentiment on my card, I'm using one of the tag sentiment pieces. This is Merry Christmas. I will add a scrap cardstock piece on the very left side, so it is gonna go behind the hole, but I'll be covering that up. I'll adhere it in place using some liquid adhesive, and I did adhere it between the wreaths since I didn't wanna cover up the vehicle at the very bottom of that panel. Next, I'll add one of the light teal bows on the very left side of the sentiment. Then to finish off the card, I'll use some more of the gem stickers. This is the dark green color, and I'll add three of them in the upper left-hand corner. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. Now moving on to card design number 10. The card making and stamping bundle kit includes 10 pre-printed 6x6 card bases. I decided to use one of the card fronts and cut down that panel to fit on an A2 size card. I cut it down to about three and three fourths of an inch by four and one fourth of an inch. I'm layering it on some red cardstock. Then I'll put adhesive on the back and add it to some green cardstock. And this green cardstock is also one of the card bases that's included in one of the kits. I'll put my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Then to finish off the card, I'll add one of the pre-tied bows to the bottom of the wreath and three of the gem stickers in the lower right-hand corner. Super easy, perfect for making a cute Christmas card. Of course, you can always use those pre-printed six by six cards, use them as is, or add some extra embellishments. For my final cards, I'm using Violet Studios card making kit, and this is from their Nutcracker collection. This is a very simple card kit to use. It includes 10 card bases, 10 sheets of decoupage, and also 10 envelopes. And the easiest thing about this kit, you don't have to figure out the design, it's already done for you. You simply punch out all the pieces, add some foam dimension on the back, and assemble your card. And I didn't mention, the kit also includes a sheet of foam dimension. There are two different designs. This one is my favorite. I love the pink snow globe with the trees on the inside. So I thought I would assemble that one with you. One thing that's fun about both of the cards in the kit, several of the pieces have a gold foil finish. So the sentiment, tis the season, is all gold with the white letters. Then the stars and the moon also have that gold finish. The final pieces to add are the stars. Some of them are pretty small. You could always leave those off if you don't wanna mess with those teeny tiny pieces. But I wanted to show what the card would look like fully assembled. I have just a few more stars to add. 
Now what's really fun about the snow globe card, it also includes a small piece and you use this to create a stand on the back side. There's already a scored line, so you simply fold that down, add some adhesive on that folded piece, then adhere it in place on the back of your card. Now I would suggest using liquid adhesive, the double-sided tape did pop off later but it's nice to use to get the placement correct. So there is the card all finished. And if you don't wanna use the tis the season sentiment, you also have the option of Merry Christmas. And you could set aside the other sentiment for another project. And here's a look at the other card design that's included in the kit. And my daughter even helped me assemble one of them since they're so easy to do. And the kit also includes 10 beautiful envelopes with the gold foil finishes on them. Now here's another look at the 24 cards I made using some new Christmas kits from Violet Studio. They have two fun Christmas collections, Home for Christmas and also the Nutcracker. If you are interested in any of the products I used in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. There are so many fun card kits available. They work great individually, or you can pick up multiple kits since they do work well together. Plus, many of the kit contents are sold individually. Violet Studio also has some fun kits that aren't card making. There's an advent calendar, bow making, embroidery. There's a kit to make felt ornaments and several other options as well. And I will have a link for all of Violet Studios products in the description box below. I want to give a big thanks to scrapbook.com for sending me all of the fun Violet Studio products. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.